Welcome back guys, RSX all wheel drive update number seven. I know it's been forever since the last update, but I've just been swamped with dyno tuning and this time of year is just really busy. Luckily, my good friend Brandon from Escargo Busa Garage is here to help me out and finish this car up. Brandon and I have been friends for nearly 20 years, working together on different projects and whatnot. I featured his two of his cars on my channel in the past. Uh, he owns the black S2000 that made 850 wheel horsepower and also the red FK Civic Type R. He is a fantastic mechanic and fabricator, so he's gonna help me finish up this car. If you haven't had a chance, check out his channel, Escargo Boosted Garage. I will link it in the description. But today is all about the RSX and getting it finished up. We have a ton of work, a ton of little things to do. I can't remember exactly where we left off in the last video. Technically, it is currently all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive drivetrain is all done and installed, but there is still a ton of little things to do on this car to get it finished so that it's that we can get it back on the road and start driving it. One of the things that we need to tackle today is a complication that arose from converting this car to all-wheel drive. Uh, the issue with converting the car to all-wheel drive is we do need to use a CRV rear trailing arm, but when you use a CRV rear trailing arm on one of these RSXs, it messes up the rear ride height. Um, what I have here is the car is on the ground, and this is its new ride height with the uh, CRV trailing arm. The issue is, the mounting point for the shock or the rear coilover is different on the CRV trailing arm and it, what it does is it ends up raising the ride height a significant amount by comparison to what it used to be. This is the ride height that the car was at with the original suspension settings in the back but now because of the rear CRV trailing arms we have significantly more ride height. So that needs to be rectified. In order to rectify this. Uh, you do need a set of coilovers. You won't be able to use your stock suspension if you were trying to get away with it on a budget. Uh, and my issue is the type of coilovers that I'm running can't make up for this difference in ride height. Not to worry though, my good friends at K-Tune to the rescue again, they have hooked me up with a set of their coilovers. So the plan for today is I'm gonna lift the car up. I'll show you what I mean with the issue of my current coilovers. Then we're gonna get to installing the K-Tune coilovers and show how that we can overcome this issue with the rear trailing arm. Why don't I lift up the car, show you what I mean about the rear suspension difference, and then we're gonna get started installing the coilovers and setting them all up. All right guys, so with the car up in the air, I can kind of show you what I mean about this issue with the rear suspension. So as you've seen in previous videos, I did use a CRV rear trailing arm to allow me to um, do this all wheel drive conversion. The complication that arises from using these trailing arms is that this mounting point for the rear suspension is different. It's basically higher than the original RSX point, which causes the car to have the higher ride height. So if you were to try to use a stock suspension setup, your, your ride height would be way too high. And, or if you use a style of coilovers like these teen coilovers that only have the one height adjustment that is all based on the spring preload, it's not gonna work. Uh, I cannot lower the, this mounting point enough to compensate for the right amount of ride height that I need to adjust for. So, like I said, my good friends at K-Tuned helped me out with a set of their coilovers. And what makes these coilovers different is their ride height adjustments are all done in this lower portion, uh, completely separate of the spring preload. So you, so you don't have to mess with the spring preload to set ride height. And that's the issue with the team coilovers there. One adjustment for both ride height and spring preload. So I can set, we can leave the spring preload the way it is and do all of our ride height adjustment with this lower perch. So the plan for today, get these installed and reset the ride height so that the car will be drivable and not a monster truck in the rear. So why don't we get started? All right guys, Brandon's got the coilovers off or at least the old coilovers off and I have them side by side with the new K-Tune coilovers and hopefully I can help share what I meant by the difference in adjustability. So these are the old teen coilovers that I've been running. They actually came with the car, they were fine. A little soft in my opinion. I'm sure these K-tuned ones will be much better. Um, but what I was trying to emphasize before was there's no real way to set the ride height well or make up the difference in the ride height on the old coilovers because this is the only adjustment right here and it controls the spring preload. And the difference with the K-tuned coilovers is they have the same preload adjustment for the spring, but this portion is adjustable as well. So you can raise and lower the bottom. Um, Hopefully it's gonna be enough. It actually is kind of close. This is the setting of the coilovers that were on the car. This is the lowest I can go with the K-Tune coilover. So I hope that's gonna make enough of a difference. If not, what we might have to do 
is modify the CRV uh, mounting point as well and possibly lower this hole and make a new hole slightly further down as low as we can get it to try to make up for the difference in the ride height. But let's install the coilovers, get the car back on the ground and, and see how these coilovers affect the ride height. All right guys, coilovers are all installed. We got the front and rear coilovers installed. Um, already we can tell that the ride height is going to be improved because the rear gap for the fender gap to the tire is a lot less. Um, we have installed the coilovers at their absolute lowest setting. So hopefully this will be enough. We won't know for sure until the car's had a chance to drive around on them and, and basically let the spring settle a bit. Um, I suspect it's still gonna be a bit high and the only way to combat that will be actually make a new hole in these brackets to uh, allow the coilover to come down a bit. And I think there's just enough room to and enough material to make a new hole, but we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. For now, the coilovers are installed. They are not fully installed. I do have to get a new bolt because I've messed the bolt up. And once I do that, the cool thing about these coilovers are they come with different bushings. And I have the package here. You can basically mix and match the bushings that go into this uh, bushing at the bottom. To, to deal with the different spaces. So I'm gonna have to play around with a few different types of bushings on either side to get the spacing right. But it's nice that K-Tune provides those, these basically spacers of bushings to be able to do this, so. So that's about it for underneath. Why don't I put the car down and show you what it's like on the ground. All right guys, so car's on the ground. I actually did move it back and forth a little bit just to help get to the actual ride height. And uh, I think we're pretty close. It is still a little high in my opinion. It is about, what, a little less than two fingers in the back. But you know what, I'm not, I'm okay with this ride height. I think this will be very streetable. It'll definitely be an issue if, for guys that want to slam these cars if you go all wheel drive. But uh, this ride height is not too bad. I think it actually looks pretty good and it has a little bit of a rake to it. So the front is a little bit lower than the rear, but uh, so far I'm liking this ride height. It looks good to me, but only time will tell once the coilovers have a chance to settle fully if I need to adjust it. But realistically, I'm not into slamming these cars. So I think this will actually work out for my needs. So I realize this is probably gonna be a very quick video, um, but I did wanna share this issue I had come across and I've known about it for a while. I just had a chance to install the coilovers and share this with you guys. So because this is probably gonna be such a short video, I thought I might do a little uh, bonus bit and share with you an update and a quick update on my Porsche project. Some of you guys might know that I've been working away on my Porsche, trying to do the uh, K24 turbo swap. And I'm happy to say the car is here and I wanted to share a quick little update for you guys that, are, that have watched this far along in the video. But, uh, for those that might not know, this is my 2006 Porsche 911 Carrera S, and I was bored with the power level, so I swapped in a Honda K24 with a custom turbo kit that uh, myself and my good friend Eric Levine helped create. Um, it has a K24 Z7 engine with a Garrett G35 900. I have a full playlist on this car uh, with all the videos kind of up until this point, but uh, so if you're interested and you haven't seen any of these videos, do me a favor, check out that playlist. But uh, what I kind of wanted to share with you guys quickly was, is how far along this car is. So why don't I just quickly do this. Key on. And the car is alive guys. It runs, it drives, I can move it around. Let me, uh, The cluster is happy. Everything basically works. Um, let me just turn this off. So yeah, guys, uh, thought I'd just share a quick little update because I haven't really shared much about this car in a long time, that it is finally up and running. It is like 95% ready to go. I hope to tune it in the, in the next week or so and see what it finally puts down. But if you're interested in this, stay tuned. I will be doing another update video on this shortly, 
sharing everything that I've done up to this point, and then it'll be on to tuning and seeing how much power this car actually makes. But yeah, that's about it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I know it was probably short on RSX content, which is probably the reason why you really clicked on this video, but uh, I will be keeping up on this car on the RSX. The plan is to have my friend Brandon come back at least once or twice a week, and we are going to be working away at this car. So we're gonna be working on this car as much as we can get to try to get this thing done. I want it to be done. I wanna be able to enjoy it, and I don't wanna miss the summer. So we are gonna be working away at it as quickly as possible. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I will uh, continue making these videos. So thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.